All right, thank you all for joining. My name is Jody Rodney, and I am the VP of Marketing and Education for Plan Mecca USA. Today is the second in our Digital Mastery webinar series, and with us is Dr. Shay Tolbert from South Carolina. Our topic today is Going Digital for Practice Growth. Before we start, I do have a few housekeeping items. Um, all attendees will be muted. If you are experiencing any technical issues, please submit your issues via the chat function. If you have questions for Dr. Tolbert, please submit them via the Q&A function and we will answer at the end of the presentation. We anticipate the presentation to take approximately 60 minutes and afterwards we will be open to questions. Additionally, we are recording the webinar and we'll send you the link following the presentation. At the end, there will be a post webinar CE survey via chat. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tolbert. Hey everybody, kind of a little different times here, but uh, we're gonna have some fun today. Sorry about the video feed, but um, we're gonna go right into this. So going digital. So we're all in this lockdown with coronavirus pandemic quarantine and you've probably already reached the end of the internet, probably already watched every Netflix show. But uh, I'm telling you now, the goal today is really get you fired up again uh, about dentistry again and thanks for joining us today. So today's um, kind of summary or objectives, trying to really keep it action packed. I wanna show you a lot of stuff. Um, so, but this is a webinar and I can't really see you or see if you're fading or falling asleep. So sometimes it'll be kind of fast. We only have about an hour. So don't worry, but we'll have time at the end um, for questions. There's gonna be a recording of this. So um, it's Friday, so let's have some fun. So fully integrating your practice with the power of 3D through completely digital workflow and kind of go through the different topics today. Uh, digital impressions, um, you can, using CAD CAM, smile design, 3D printing, 3D CT scans, CBCT, implant surgical guide planning and fabrication, and uh, digital implant restorative workflows. So try to cover a little bit of everything today. So the digital journey. So we're all on this journey to serve our patients better. So I really want to share with you today a little bit about my general, uh, digital journey and how we integrated Plan Mecca Tech into our office. But a little bit about me first. I practice in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, it's a pretty big engineering town. Um, we've got Michelin, General Electric, Floor Daniel, BMW, and they all are already using CAD and CAD CAM and 3D printing. Um, so they're already pretty savvy about what's going on here. So it's a pretty cool place to practice dentistry, especially with high technology. Um, and we'll, we'll get right to it. Uh, my practice can do uh, anything without all my partners. Um, uh, I practice in Greenville, Greenville, South Carolina. So we've got a few, I'm part of a, a larger group practice, a private group practice. Um, we have actually six doctors at my location and then um, Overall, of our group, we have 24 different entities. So we use this uh, technology in, in almost all of them, but we have 14 general dentist office. We have five ortho, two pedo, two peri, and one sleep. So that's kind of a little bit of kind of about the group that I'm in. A little bit about my background. Went to Clemson University. Go Tigers. Uh, went to MUSC Dental School down in Charleston, South Carolina. The University of Florida for a AGD residency in Clearwater, St. Pete really tied to the Dawson and uh, Panky Institute for higher end learning. And then I've been, ever since then, I've been with Family Dental Health a little bit over a decade here. <clears throat> kind of a hum humble brag here with MUSC in Charleston, kind of a big shout out down there, heavily involved in digital dentistry. Um, Dr. Wally Renee was one of my classmates in dental school and he's helped leading the way down there. Dr. Tony Menudo, um, Dr. Zach Evans, Dr. Mark Ludlow, and Dr. Christian Breen's are really integrating technology, even in dental school training down there. And I think they're probably one of the first that have pioneered uh, digital dentistry um, residency for after. So if you're a dental student watching this, um, really look into what all they have to offer down there in Charleston. A little bit about my foundation too, with the residency I did in Florida, um, direct ties with the Dawson Academy and Pete Dawson. So really, um, I want to pres this presentation is kind of in dedication or loving memory of Pete Dawson. He taught me a lot <clears throat> about comprehensive dentistry, 
serving our patients and our community, and really the love and passion for our profession and life in general. Full disclosure, I'm on the Plenmeca Board of Education, uh, Plenmeca, uh, KOL, but really, I mean, I, I use this technology every day in our practice. And you know, to the purpose today is really to share with you my digital journey. So Plenmeca Fit, fully integrated technology. So I really wanna show you why Plenmeca has some of the best solutions in digital dentistry. So normally I have an audience and kind of get a feel for who's out there, but you know, in a virtual world, you really can't raise your hand as much like this, but okay, who out there really has a scanner, a mill, CT scanner, and a 3D printer? But who really knows how to use it all together? That's when the real ROI comes. So if you're integrating this technology, and you're able to use it all tied together, that's when you're gonna win big for your, um, for your practice and for your patients. That's why Plameca Fit has have helped me have a very successful digital journey because there's lots of hardware and software to learn, but if they don't speak to each other and you can't tie them together, it's really kind of a headache. So it's a big investment. So choose really wisely when you're looking in. You know, you have docs out there that may have a scanner from this manufacturer and a mill from different, and even a CT scanner or 3D printer from different um, companies. But when, if, when you have the power to be able to tie it all together, that's when you can have a seamless integration. I think that's why our practices have been really successful in uh, using this daily um, and not just, a, you know, investing and then abandoning it like some others can do on the learning curve. The brain that ties it all together is the software as well. So Plameca's hardware is top notch. Their software ties it all together and that's what makes the seamless workflow. That's one of the biggest themes I think you'll get away, get away with from today.
So scan, plan, diagnose, and create. It really shows you kind of a powerful video of how it integrates all the technologies together to have a successful digital journey. Okay, starting with, let's just start with uh, digital impressions in general. That's when I got started in 2009, um, starting with the E40 cart. Um, but, you know, the technology is a lot different with the imaging there, but at that point, really, you're taking a still image of different screenshots, and then the software is able to puzzle it together into a 3D model. Then around 2014, we integrated and progressed to the plan scan, and that changed the game big time because then it was more like a video game. I wasn't having to stitch different images together. And then the software hardware changed or evolved and progressed uh, the Emerald. We, we started with our Emerald scanners in 2018, and now they have the Emerald S. So it just keeps evolving and keeps changing with digital impressions. So that's a little bit about my digital journey and my timeline. So really, you know, the, one of the first things I usually get asked or, you know, what's the ROI, you know, what's your return on investment? And I don't really want to get into a lot of the, the detailed numbers, but I'm just going to give you broad, just average numbers, just to kind of get, get, your, get your mind thinking about it. But okay, let's look at different ways you could go about it. So scan only, meaning you're scanning your singing out, or CAD CAM where you're scanning and designing a house. Those are two of the big, big camps, um, which you want, uh, which you're getting into. But really, it's a little deeper because you have many different options with, options with Planmeca because it is open software. So it's a little bit deeper. So let's just talk about option one, scan only. So you're scanning and you're sending to the lab uh, to make your restorations. You're gonna save on impression material, reduce lab costs, faster turnaround time, sometimes reduce lab fees, you know, just average costs there. So scan only, return on investment? I don't know, I mean, I like it because it gets you in the game. So one of my friends, Dr. Donnie Murray, you know, he says, don't just scan and let someone else do all the cool stuff. The hard part is the scan. The fun part is the design. And that's when you really start to grow and change. But, you know, scan only ROI, yeah, it gets you started. Option two, scan, but you send it out to the lab. They design, but you do have a mill. Then you can mill. Why would you do that? You know, maybe it's like a harder case or you want a little bit of a lab's touch on the design. You can scan and with Playmaker software, easily export and send straight to the lab for the design. And if you arrange it ahead of time and less than an hour, you can have design and you can be milling and offer a same day delivery uh, of a, a service. So lab design fees can, you know, range in different shapes and forms, but then you stain and glaze, just looking at round numbers there, you know, you're, 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 you're still saving. Kind of the middle ground would be option three, you scan, you design, but you send to the lab to mill. All right, so you have the scanner, you have the software, you're designing your, uh, your own restoration, but then you, you're sending it for the lab to mill it, okay? So that's a, real, that's a real bit of cost savings. I mean, you know, just some, pulling some numbers, Zirconia Milling's a nice lab, they'll, they'll send you a, you know, a case. Alien Milling, heck, it's Friday. Some, it's free Fridays on, for Alien Milling. That's less than your Starbucks this morning. So think about that. Option four, you scan, you design, and you mill. That's where the true ROI is. Same day appointment. Okay, if you're looking at numbers, average saving, you have to do about 15 crowns a month to make your payment. But if you're doing more than just single crowns, if you're doing onlays, small designs, multiple units, implant restoration, your ROI becomes insane. But really, it's about the patient. So. It's a much better experience for someone that can't tolerate, cannot tolerate impressions, sitting there for three to four minutes with an impression material in their mouth, gagging, making a mess. It's no fun, no temp, no second injection, no second appointment, a lot of advantages to that. That's where I think you win. So don't get caught up in the weeds looking at the uh, little bit of the numbers. The ROI is definitely in the same day. So the biggest thing for me was I think my dentistry got a lot better, better dentistry. It's engineering, art, fun addiction. I started looking, when we started designing, we started looking at our retraction techniques better. We started looking at how we prepped our margins, what burrs we use, um, our, our reduction, where we were, you know, where I, I could see where my personal flaws and my reduction were, under-reduced, um, kind of looking at the design, looking at the neighboring teeth, the occlusion, the bigger picture. So you are the lab. 
And so you're able to have some satisfaction in, in having design from the beginning to the end. But I think that's where your real ROI is. You're, you're doing better dentistry. So maybe a lot better dentist. And my team, my team has really taken off with this. Two day appointments and then same day, speed efficiently. Everybody's gonna have a learning curve. You're gonna crawl, walk, run and fly. You're not gonna start out slaying, you know, hour, 90 minute, same day appointments, but you gotta start somewhere. And that's kind of where we started back with the cart scan. Then we got more efficient with it with instead of two day appointments, one day appointments. And then we saw the benefit of that uh, with our patient care and then our speed got better. And then we're really adding uh, so many different things to our, to our workflows. You'll never find the perfect impression material. You'll never find the perfect scanner, but really just want to figure out what's the best for you in your office. So look how far we've come I was with the cart scanner and then the plan scanner and then now the Emerald and soon the Emerald S. And this is a picture of our lab. There's a lot of technology in here. Um, we have in my office, we have six doctors. We have three Emerald, um, Emerald scanners, laptops. We have two of the plan scan, uh, three ovens. We have a mill um, in there and two mills, really, and uh, to, to integrate here soon. And it's just, it doesn't matter what part of the learning curve you're on. So we all kind of kind of do it different. We have a workflow for every solution, whether you're same day, two appointments. Heck, we have offices that don't have a scanner. They'll, they'll take an impression and send it. And we'll pour up the impression, dish the dye, um, scan the model, scan the, the stone model and design it and make the crown in house. Different ways you can attack this. So what's your weapon of choice? That's what you got to think about. To me, it's the Plan Mecca Emerald. Scanning is now like a video game. Scanning before we were taking pictures and stitching them together which was still amazing. The technology to be able to do that with the software really was pretty cool. But then if you have one little bubble, you had to find the certain little slide or picture to delete and rescan again. So there was, you know, so there was some frustrations, a learning curve there, but you got to where you got pretty good with this. And then we get to more like a video scanning with the lasers and the plan scan. And then now with the Emerald and the Emerald S and it becomes a lot, more manageable to do on an everyday basis and, very, and more easy and user friendly. And then even the, the patients are getting to the scans. It's pretty cool. You can kind of see when we go back to the old school way, I go back in kicking and screaming. This was a picture an assistant took one day. This patient was gagging. We've gone through two or three impressions and I feel like it's barbaric almost when we go back to the old school way of taking impressions with PVS. So it's just a fun picture. We snap, um, but you, you know, look how far we've come. We, we actually, the next time, uh, we restored her, we, we were scanning and she was like, well, why do we ever do it the other way? And I was like, exactly. Um, so, you know, the patients like it a lot better too. Positivity of delegation. Team, it's a definitely a team effort. This is Tanya and Latoya, my, my chair set assistants here, and they, they're all in with the, with the scanning. Uh, even with the, the design and the, and the milling of the restoration. So look how far we've come. At first it was all me. Now it's like, you know, we were going 50-50. I was scanning, they were scanning some, and now we, we, we say Paul, we say prep, and they, they wave at me goodbye. I say prep and walk. It's, you know, it's mostly them. So they're getting involved. The team staff uh, relationship really love uh, getting to the digital workflow. And now we have an in-house lab. Tanya is actually a certified digital technician. She's a certified digital designer, and she went all in. So she helps all of us and all our teams in our office um, take care of these cases on a daily basis. Old school way right here with the cart. You know, mid, you know for those that hadn't seen this before, you know, you were taking still images. You would pause, stop, pause, stop, and get, you know, a little bit of the quadrant. And you see on the bottom, you know, where um, you have all these still images. Now we've got a, a live video stream. This is a video that Dr. Wally Renee did with the dental students, just kind of showing the difference in quality um, compared to other scanners. They have a lot of different scanners at their resource down there in Charleston that they get to use, but you know, comparing all the different scanners uh, when they scan the same quadrant here. Look how cool and look how live this is. And 
you take still images and be part of your patient record. You're talking about for submissions, for insurance, um, patient education. It's, it's just the way to go. Digital workflow accuracy. Crowns fabricated from a digital approach. Uh, fit is accurate or more accurate than conventional techniques. But really, even if you don't have a scanner in office yet, you're, you're already doing CAD CAM dentistry. They're taking your impressions, they're pulling your models, they're scanning your models, and they're using their lab software to design the restorations. So why not skip all the air and the impression making, the stone pouring, all the human errors can come with that and go straight to the scanning. CAD CAM in our office, everyday single units is a bread and butter dentistry. And even we get into partial coverage and you're able to do more minimally invasive techniques and offer your patient a better solution for something that's kind of in between a crown uh, and a large filling. One thing I think is really fun that, that changed big for us is survey crowns. You used to index with PVS after your other one and send it and sometimes it would fit, sometimes it wouldn't fit. With scanning, you, it's, it's predictable every time. Uh, you can scan of the top picture, um, you can scan a little uh, index of the partial overlay your design, and you can kind of design it within the parameters of the class um, and the rest seats. Or you can just clone the, the tooth that was there, the shape of it, and it mimics it exactly. These, these are slam dunk now. Before it was just like, oh gosh, it was always a headache. Partial coverages, um, like I was saying before, something in between a large filling and a crown, sometimes you can be more minimally invasive, for sure. Rolling through a few cases, partial coverage, and only uh, about 4% are doing partial coverage. I think when you get into CAD CAM, that your percentage is gonna go way up with that, and then you're gonna see the benefits uh, of being, um, of learning your adhesive dentistry and uh, conservative preparations and restorations. Single units, all day long, do the margins fit? Margins are wonderful. Um, look at the x-ray on that front tooth. The margins fit perfect. Then you kind of graduate your progression into multiple units. You can do bridges in the anterior, depending on what block you're using. Um, but here's a, a design of a, a three-unit bridge. Here's a lower front bridge um, we did with uh, Ivoclar Emacs. You know, having total control of doing this for same day was something that's really good solution. Going kind of on a different note here, some fun things you can do with CAD CAM. Maryland bridges or adhesion um, bridges um, to serve our patients with congenitally missing laterals. I think these are cases are really fun before. Oh, I just kind of dread them, um, but now we have some great solutions. Um, so here's a case, kind of walk you through with both laterals missing. Can you just straight up mark the margin on the tissue and on the teeth? We'll design our pontic tooth with a wing. Kind of customize the shape in the mouth. Use our artistic stain and glaze techniques. She had, I'll go back, she had a lot of this character here you see kind of on number eight and nine with the frosting. And there's her before and after. Um, what a great solution for a patient. And this was actually a case of the same day. She came in the office, she got the braces off. She was starting school tomorrow. She's like, can you do this today? And I was like, oh gosh, okay. We went for it, really cool. Uh, a really good workflow for this. Also, um, yeah, since Plamec is open, a lot of orthodontists have different scanners in their office, but they can scan the day before, or the visit before, excuse me, um, before the D-band or D-bracket appointment export the files if they have a system that's open to do so. Pimeca's is, so you can import the files, design, and have the restoration ready before they even get the braces off. So they come to their braces off appointment, then they show up, and you just do the try-in, adjust, and bond it in. Versus like this case where she just came in and whew, we gotta go all through the whole workflow, but it's possible, it's great, it's a great solution. We really have fun with this. Uh, one wing versus two wing. Uh, one wing has a higher success rate, and uh, I was really stubborn for a long time. I did two wing, and almost all of them, the, the second wing became debonded, so I'd have to remove those. So one wing, our, when we went to one wings, our success rates went way up. Get into multiple units uh, in the anterior. Um, you know, before and after is a pretty good result there. That's with Emacs. 
What I really loved about it, and I'll put this video in here, is to just really show you the occlusion. Occlusion on anteriors with a deep bite or kind of a steep, um, you can see he's got some wear on those lower fronts. So, you know, the, the envelope of function, you're thinking about all these different things. You're able to look at occlusion a different way and slice plane each restoration and kind of go through um, your, uh, your centric and your, you, you look in your mind for your excursive and you're trying not to build in interferences. So it's really cool being in control of some of this and be able to do uh, a same day case like this. Mill it out all the restorations. Give it a little love after you mill to kind of characterize it a little bit more. And just in case we had um, actually already had a pre-made uh, 3D model. And there's your before and after. Another case, four unit um, Emacs case, really cool to be able to jump right in there and change the, the way this guy's confidence is with this smile. Then here's another one um, going pretty interesting before and there's your after and that's with Ivoclar Empress Multi and that that those those blocks are beautiful so I really want to show you what's possible from a single unit partial coverage multiple units bridges adhesive bridges um, you know four pack a six pack in the front whatever once you start getting into this you, you can deliver high-end restorations and Halloween time we always have a little bit of fun even vampire tea so pretty fun and have cool with this CAD cam <laughs> around Halloween for sure. So keep calm and scan on. Everybody's learning curve is gonna be a little different. You're gonna have this initial shock, you'll have another breakthrough, you'll be excited, and then you'll have another breakthrough, then you'll have frustration, you'll go, there's all these different zones you're gonna go through, but Plan Becca has so many good solutions um, of support and team to guide you through, through every single barrier you'll go through, and I promise you, Plan Becca, um, will not let you fail. They'll, they'll help you get through every stage. Fun shot of my son with our old E40 mill, and we had it for a long time running, and you can see the growth or change after a few years. Um, you know, before and after there is pretty cool. 3D printing, so skipping pages for a minute, or switching topics rather, let's talk 3D printing just a little bit, because it gonna tie, it's gonna tie into some of the Plan Mecca workflows they were like for small design and surgical guide designs. So my 3D printing journey, uh, mainly, you know, there's a lot of different uses. I use it for implant surgical guides, small design uh, models, uh, ortho. There's so much more. Clusal guards, dentures, COVID uh, masks. People are creating all kind of cool uh, masks um, there for the current situation we're in. But there's, there's many different things you can tie your 3D printing into. Um, ROI. Again, y'all, just rough numbers here, just looking at stuff. So if you send something to the lab, smile design model, the 3D printer model, send it to you. They may charge you for the design or the model versus free, um, you, you know, you do it on your own software and you're printing a model yourself. Surgical guides I can plan and outsource um, and uh, 3D print your guide and mail it to you. You have to wait in between. Um, sometimes it takes a few weeks, sometimes it takes longer versus planning it on your own software, 3D printing it on your own 3D printer uh, in-house. Uh, different types of resins cause um, different costs. And then ortho, that's a big, that's where you're really going to win big. Um, you're doing aligners with, say, uh, Invisalign um, versus there's a lot of different companies out there that do a really good job for software you can download, like iRock, Exceed, uh, SureSmile, um, ULab, and you can do anything from design it or send it or send it and they, they um, make the models and you can print it or you can design it live and print it that same day. Different work was for this. But definitely an ROI of getting to 3D printing if you're in digital. Uh, it's almost, 3D printing is almost in everything now. To me, the ROI, ROI really is changing now because the printers are getting so fast. Plymecus Creo is extremely fast. You know, one of our, our goals for someone coming in and getting a smile design is to really do this efficiently. So a same day travel design is really a reality with fast scanners uh, and fast 3D printers. Really describing that workflow. Uh, I'll show a video coming up, you know, kind of leading into it, but patient comes in, uh, they're going out of the country soon. They want to, you know, smile design on the upper anterior, a four pack, six pack, six pack. You just design it with uh, your smile design. You scan them, 
um, small design, you do your design, 3D print the model, and then you can do a same day try-in of the trial small. And your case acceptance can go way up. Um, same thing with surgical guides, you plan the implant, 3D print the guide for same day surgery. Um, ortho with ULAB, you can, you can actually uh, work on your scans and the models in there and actually start 3D printing that day. Um, so with Creo's blazing fast printing, it's, it's really a possible reality. But I'll, I'll be honest with y'all, I wasn't the first to 3D print in our family. And I was a little bit embarrassed about this, but you know, I was, I was looking at all these 3D printing stuff on YouTube. My daughter saw me and she's like, oh, come here. And she brought in this 3D printed heart, melted my heart. Their elementary school already had a 3D printer, a MakerBot. And she's like, yeah, we do 3D printing at the school. So if, if, if they can 3D print in elementary school, I think you guys can figure this out. So it's pretty cool to integrate this. It's a small design, 3D printed model. That's what it looks like. 3D printed surgical guides. More uh, kind of examples of 3D printed guides we do. A lot of times uh, we don't really uh, print the models anymore. They, they fit really good. Um, but sometimes you just want to do a trial fit or if you're, um, we have cases where we design surgical guides for, um, you know, a team effort. We're working with doctors in other offices or um, with specialists. Um, sometimes it's nice to 3D print the model and the guide to, to have them check it out before they go right into the surgery. And then ortho aligner models to make your own aligners, aligners in office. So plan, make a smile design. You heard me kind of talk a little bit about that. You saw a little bit of teaser in that first video, but it's very simple and very powerful. I've used a few different things for smile design. Um, and some of them are difficult, some of them are fun, some of them are not very realistic. Um, but treatment planning and patient education and using photorealistic visuals um, is really cool about Climeca Smile Design. Exporting it right into your plan CAD. So when you're designing your crowns, you're looking at a silhouette and you can design your crowns within the 2D, 3D facial treatment plan you kind of worked up. And then going straight to exporting uh, to Romexis for surgical crown lengthening is, is something that it even opens the doors for. I'll show you that at the very end. So smile design, you're really going to take three pictures, smile picture, a retracted um, picture, and a close-up retracted, and then you're going to do your alignment. You're going to overlay your templates there, and it really helps proving uh, patient acceptance. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Look at the before and after there on the right. You can kind of look how realistic that is. It's very visually powerful. And you do this right in front of the patient a lot of times and they, you know, they get involved. You're looking at sizes and proportions. Overlaying the silhouette into the CAD CAM uh, plan CAD, easy, and that helps you with your design. So this just shows you how you overlay that silhouette over your, your design of the four upper interiors there um, to help guide you. More, for more fast and efficient um, designs there. This is a case where just simplistic overlaying the silhouettes here and the patient got more involved than I did. I was just kind of playing with this and he's like, wow, I've lost half my teeth on that side. And wow, what are we gonna do about the gums on, on the other side to batch? So to make this look balanced. And submit, I mean, he was answering all the questions for, uh, for our restorations and our crown lengthening plan right in front of me. And you can even print this off and send it, you know, to your specialist for um, your, your planning, or you can send it to your lab um, when they're doing the, uh, a digital wax up. But it really opens the discussion about, you know, and help about tooth loss and then help them see and understand crown lengthening. You know, crown lengthening was pretty kind of a, a tougher discussion sometimes say, hey, you know, we've got the white aesthetics, the pink aesthetics, but crown lift, they really didn't get it. You know, why did I have to have a, a surgery before we start? Why can't I just go right into temporaries right now? And, you know, when, we, when, we, when we're seeing it like this, in front of the patient chair side, their case acceptance, their understanding is the key. And then if your patient understands the treatment, they're much more likely to um, accept before and after. So just a simplistic visual there. So combining the technology, we're talking about plan CAD before, we talked about smile design, we talked about 3D printing, and you know, with 
same day, being able to print with a fast Creo in, in a small design mock-up, you know, we, we've done a few courses um, with Launch Digital Dentistry, with Are You Numb Yet? Um, and some live workflows to show that this is possible. Um, this is live. So here's a video kind of shown demonstrating that. And this is when we did the need for speed was kind of our theme. You have going fast through this, being able to do this same day. It's a reality with the technology here with Plan Mecca. Um, we even had a little fun with some race cars at the BMW track to kind of go along with the theme. So here we go. This is what it looks like. Uh, Dr. Uh, Renee scanning my mouth and doing a smile design. So that kind of shows you the whole thing from scan, taking the photos, using the smile design, overlay it in your plan, plan cat easy, exporting the model for three port, um, 3D printing, and you print the model, do a putty index on the 3D printed model, and that's what you do the trial smile with. That's where your cases separates can go up, and that is possible same day um, through that workflow when you use all of Plan Mecca's products, extremely fast and extremely efficient. So switching gears again, um, staying in the 3D um, theme, we're going to 3D CBCT um, technology. So you can't treat what you can't see and 3D CT scans will open so many doors for you. So let me share about my journey with 3D um, CT scanners. So uh, we have the uh, 3D Plameca Classic. Um, we integrated that in our office in 2013. Um, first, really, only, honestly, we, we had an orthodontist in our, joining our group and we saw the need for 3D for planning for orthognathic surgeries or impacted teeth and uh, just happened to be in the same office where we were sharing space. So we got a 3D CT scanner in there and I thought, okay, you know, this will add um, to our office and um, our treatment plan for implants, but I'm not sure exactly what else. I was kind of unsure how much I was pretty comfortable with what I was doing and think I would actually be able to do more, but boy, was I wrong. Like 3D... Uh, opened so many different doors for me. And I think that is where the real ROI um, is with uh, a CT scanner. Dr. Mike Young did a fantastic webinar um, uh, on Wednesday that you can um, look on the Plan Medical website of going in the 3D, um, 3D CT scans and how it can add to your practice. But it's, it's been a game changer for us. Uh, we started also, you know, with the Plan Medical Classic, we can do... Um, 2D pan bite wings. I thought that was really cool. I hadn't seen that technology before. And, you know, you got four, uh, four bite wings versus uh, a pan extra oil bite wing. Big deal for a patient as a gagger that you can't get the x-ray sensors in for uh, intra oil um, x-rays. Plus, you're going to see so much more beyond what you see on regular traditional bite wings. Um, and the diagnostic quality is, is, is really good. We love using our TD pan, 2D pan bite wing option. Not going to go a lot into this, but radiation with uh, FMX, um, round 170, digital pans, 
or really low with the technology with Plenbeck, and that's the game changer with their stuff, um, being responsible with the radiation doses. And they have low dose um, um, technology and protocol. So where we're getting down to effective doses that are lower than a few PAs, y'all, and the quality does not go away. So it's high, um, low dose, high resolution is, is the main thing. And that's where Plemeca does extremely wear, well on the market with their hardware. Um, the images are beautiful, but they're also very safe and responsible for the patient. Um, study down in, U, uh, in UNC, and you know, it's kind of just showing that even with the low-dose ultra, low-dose protocols, you're not dropping your diagnostic quality. Um, and you're finding incidental findings um, I found that to be a big thing when we started taking CD, CT scans and started integrating it. We started seeing things we weren't able to see before. And we'd take a CT scan for an implant, and we'd find two uh, lesions that we didn't see on the x-rays um, that needed endo. So it opens a whole uh, different door um, for more opportunities um, to help your patient be more preventive in their, in their care, but also catch things earlier. Um, so surgery and implants will go through CAD CAM, combining the technology when you're making your surgical guides, trauma, pathology, endodontics. I'll show you examples of all this in our office, but this really where it adds more. There's so much more you're adding when you're, when you're doing CT scans. Surgery anatomy is a big difference. You'll, you'll see a lot of different anatomy. It varies from patient to patient. Um, this was a case where it was a failing endo case. Uh, I guess they, you know, didn't really kind of see all the canals or who knows, I'm not sure exactly what the case was, but we presented with abscess here and it looked a little funky on the x-ray. Um, we actually had a CT scan for on this patient, not just for this case, uh, not for this tooth, but we were actually planning an implant on the opposite side. But it looked kind of funny and went back to the CT scan after I numbed the patient up and I was like, oh, the distal root looks a little different. So on the x-ray you see maybe something's kind of funky on there, but you really can't see that well in the x-ray. And going through the CT scanner on the 3D model kind of changing the density there. Wow, the distal root has two roots, and that's, that's rare on a lower molar. Imagine doing endo on that case um, and not expecting that. That's probably why it failed. Anyhow, extracted, regrafted. Also with anatomy, uh, well, surgery and implants, um, you know, sometimes you just can't see where the, uh, where the nerve is with IAN, so being able to see the anatomy different is really good. With implants, it's definitely a game changer. Um, before this was a case where I was referred to office for an implant. Um, X-rays look phenomenal. Palpation um, felt pretty good on this buckle plate, but when we, once we flapped, we saw there was a big defect from where the original extraction was. You really didn't can appreciate that on the X-ray. Look how thick the bone is on the adjacent side. You just couldn't appreciate it. Um, extract, grafted, came back and placed the implant. It was a long time ago when we were using Nobel Trilog. That's the old way. This is the new way. Totally different workflow now. Similar um, location in the mouth, uh, extracted and grafted as a before and after the extraction graph on the x-rays. But the sinus is kind of low there, so I'm thinking, okay, you know, we might have to angle a little bit differently. Um, but Plemec has got a great solution for this. You can even export the CT scan and use the third party that, that you know, designed. This was the very beginning. We started trying to use a um, surgical guide. So I used a company called 3DDX. They designed the guide and they mailed it to me. And then let's, let's look at what that looks like. There's a 3D printed guide, um, able to go flapless. You see the big difference from that other picture where we laid the big flap. That's the, that's the day of the surgery, you know, we flapless and, and be able to deliver that, uh, that implant. So game changer with your implants when you're using guided, you'd be much more minimally invasive, and much um, less uh, traumatic to the patient healing, um, very fast and efficient chair side. So scening, planning, and then executing that all the way through. You see different things um, on x-rays on anterior implants, um, anterior planning for implants. There's three different cases. If you're planning for an extraction and immediate implant, whole different ball game here from the left side of this tooth, the way it's angled versus the middle picture versus the one on the right. you kind of see the difference there in your planning versus on, the, on, a, on a 2D x-ray, you're not gonna be able to see that. So you appreciate the curve of Wilson and Speed. You also appreciate the mandibular concavity and how you have to angle your implants when you're planning it. Um, whole different ball game where planning implants versus 2D when you think you can just go straight up and down. You could, you could uh, really get in trouble kind of perforating a lingual 
um, the lingual there on the lower. Tying your technology together with the plan can uh, with the plan um, plan scan, um, scanning, designing your crown, and then uh, merging that technology with your CT scanner to plan crown down, uh, prosthetically planning your implant placement. So that shows you a nice workflow of the surgical guide module, and it's just very powerful, very easy to use, and tying it together with a 3D printer uh, it really helps your uh, implant surgical guides. Um, Dr. Wally Renee made this nice slide there: uh, six percent error with your guides versus you know 88 percent human error. And uh, I can't agree fully more. Going guided not only increases your accuracy, but your time is going to go way up chair side. I mean, you can take uh, all the all the time is taken in the planning of the case. So go through a few cases, anterior case here. Um, anterior lateral incisors can be really trickly because the, the facial lingual um, width of the bone is very thin. So you gotta be pretty precise placing your implant there, or especially with your um, treatment planning, especially if you wanna maybe graft before, or you can do a case where you can do um, guided and, and go right to it. So this is kind of what it looks like. 3D printed the guide, trying it in. It's a pilot hole guide in this example. Um, flapless approach, we had good keratinized tissue. Um, so guided surgery allowed for a flapless approach. Another case very similar, kind of going right to it. And what I love doing uh, about this, you can take screenshots of this and, and share it with your colleagues. If we're planning this for one of my partners, um, we can communicate back and forth with, um, with each office very, very fast and efficiently. So before, in the top left, the middle is after graft. There's the implant placement. There's our planning of it on the software. You kind of see where the x-ray is afterwards. So beginning, middle, and end. You can see how it comes to reality. Very accurate, very efficient. For sake of time, I'm going to fly through this, but this is exactly what I do chair side with a patient. So we're going to 
go through the workflow you saw before, but we're, we're first aligning everything up and we'll pick the panoramic curve. We'll mark the nerve. We'll look at our scan, import our scan, and then kind of merge it together to the CT scan. We're just picking like areas and the software stitches it together. We'll go through, we'll pick our implant, we'll pick our um, different sleeve we'll use. In this case, it's just showing it's a generic crown. It's kind of a planning of it virtually. Um, in reality, what we really do is um, we'll wax up and then merge the crown that's waxed up in occlusion. But this is for sake of example, what's possible. Going through the guide design there again and customizing it and then printing it. You can go poly drill guide, you can go fully guided, you can use all these different sleeves in the library to make any option for whatsoever way you'd like to do your implant surgeries. So there's gra um, before extraction graft, after pl implant placement, there's the 3D printed model with the guide. And then the reality of you executing it. So pretty powerful stuff being able to overlay this. Planning for multiple cases is possible. Um, this is where we did a, a, the wax up and then we designed our guide for a specialist that was placing it in town. Um, so you go right to the, the plan, um, the scan, all right? You're doing your digital wax up and occlusion, uh, crown down treatment planning for your implants and then um, implant placement and then your surgical guide design. Trauma, after a few days of having um, the CT scammer, we started seeing an influx in trauma. I don't know what was going on that summer, but x-rays sometimes don't share the whole story. Uh, patient bumps the tooth, um, really sore. X-ray looked pretty good. We take a CT scan and we see that the, uh, the root was actually broken through the buccal plate. Uh, could not see that on the x-ray and we would have had a whole different treatment plan. Um, there's another one where it was trauma in the anterior. X-rays are looking pretty good at the apex. Uh, but actually the um, roots buck broken through the buckle plate. So we take CTs on our trauma cases almost regularly now because we can see so much more. This is a case where I wasn't really sure if it was restorable, broken in the front, looking from the lingual, where does this fracture end? I'm not sure. On the CT scan, it ends right there um, on that lingual paddle where the uh, bone stops. And, you know, we deemed it was restorable. We did a root canal, fiber post core crown, a little crown lengthening and restored beautifully. But before, I don't know that we would have the same treatment plan. Pathology, uh, again, actually, I think this was like the first week we had the CT scan in our office. Um, saw some periapical lesions, looked pretty kind of wicked on the x-rays. Took a CT scan, could see so much more of the cyst going all the way up into the palate all the way around. So it changed our plan from what we may have had with our uh, x-rays to uh, a little bit more of a plan working with a specialist for a rehab and extraction graph and some uh, root canals. Root canal retreatment or extraction, refer an office, not sure, big lesion here. Um, but then we started taking a CT scan and on the, these type cases and you're seeing the periapical cyst in this case, you should even perforating to the sinus. Um, big difference in extraction and, um, and graft or rehab when you have sinus involvement there. Um, there's the before and after I worked with a periodontist on this case. Cause when I saw the x-ray, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I get that, um, lesion out. I, we had to work with periodontist and an ENT to resolve, um, what was going on there. So liability wise, imagine if you extracted that tooth and they developed the communication with the sinus and didn't heal and had some problems in the sinus as well. Um, CT scan, we kind of knew right away that that would be possible part of the journey. So we're able to manage it a lot better. Um, sinus infection, we see a lot of that. I will CT scan a case and we'll see a lot of fluid in the sinuses. So our relationships with our ENTs have grown. Um, we refer them patients. Actually, they refer us patients back through this. So we're able to see so much more. That's how we communicate now. Um, I'll take screenshots of it, um, print it off, send it with the patient when they go see their ENT um, or their general physician to look for some sinus issues and look how clean the CT scan is. So really a good trick would be put cotton rolls in between the teeth or to kind of blow air. Um, to bubble up your, um, your cheeks 
um, to get a nice clean CT scan. Endodontics, becoming the standard of care in endo, but you're looking at lesions uh, at the apex of the roots, which canal has the recurrent lesion. Go right to the CT scan, you see it's the palatal root, and it's coming all the way around to the palate. So big lesion there, changes our, um, our view of how big that actually is versus pre-op there, we're like, okay. Which root has a recurrent lesion? Not really sure on this case. Maybe the mesial buccal, maybe the um, adjacent root. CT scan, you can go right in. No question, you figure out exactly which root it's coming from. In that case, it was the mesial buccal root. X-ray looks good on this case. They were hurting on the lower left premolar area. CT scan. Found the lesion there. They could not see on the x-ray mid root level, um, probably a um, vertical root fracture, but we found an extra lesion on the top. On this scan, you can see uh, kind of an incidental finding that we were talking about before. You'll see so much more in the cases. Missed mesial buccal two canal, kind of slice plane looking at that. So we CT scan a lot of our endo cases, if not all. Take screenshots of it, send it to our specialists. A lot of them have CT scanners now. Um, Romexis uh, Plemeca has a great cloud network where you can send straight to their office. And before the patient even gets there, they're looking at the CT scan. So look into that cloud sharing option with uh, Plemeca. That's a great solution. Internal external resorption case looked maybe hopeless here with our endodontist. We weren't sure. Took a CT scan. Well, going back to the x-rays here, some big lesions, external, um, internal resorption, we were unsure. Um, we deemed it to be an internal resorption after the CT scan. We were able to save this patient's bridge. Um, this was actually about five or six years ago, and I, I, we laugh about it when he comes in for hygiene visits now, because I told him he's in one of our presentations, but total uh, different treatment plans seeing the CT scan. We we're able to save this anterior bridge and save him from having an anterior rehab with extraction, grafts, implants. That's, that's no fun. External internal resorption. Look at the canine here, lesion there. Um, CT scan screenshots, you can see it as is external resorption um, versus before you may think, oh, we have to get some in internal resorption um, due to root canal and it fails. CT scan will show you it's external resorption. So you have a better treatment plan from the beginning. Vertical root fracture, it's hard to see cracks on the teeth until you extra extract them. Everybody knows on the vertical root fracture, but this is a fun case where um, distal of the second molar did have a vertical root fracture. Went back to CT scan um, that we'd taken Actually, we took the CT scan for a different reason, implant opposite side, but we're having a problem with this tooth. And look on the lower right, you can see that deviation where the distal root, um, that separation of the bone was going even uh, a little bit lower than mid-level root level. Sleep apnea airway is a whole different uh, ball game. I have a partner that practices it solely. You can map the airway, all kind of different um, stuff you can see with that. Finally, looking at digital restorative workflows for implants. So now that we've digitally wax up plan, placed implants. Let's talk about the workflows, scan body tips, implant restoration options. So you're gonna scan your scan body, scan um, your, your site where the soft tissue, you have to remove your healing abutment and align it together and you can export that to the lab. Different types of scan bodies, I won't go into all the different types in this picture, but a lot of them are made differently, not made well. Sometimes you can't see them on the x-ray, sometimes you can, you're not sure if you have them seated. Um, there's different types of scan bodies out there and a lot of them don't have any marking on them. They'll come pretty kind of frustrated um, at first and then the lab, sometimes they have the DME file, sometimes they don't. And then keeping up with these scan bodies and organizing them in the office were a nightmare. You just had to go guess on the shape and size. Uh, True Abutment really had a great solution for that. They have metal at the base. You can see them on the x-ray and they have it. Uh, you see, that's an x-ray of the case where you can see it connected. No question there versus some of that are all peak plastic, can't see. Um, they have etching on it with the type implant size, which is great. Thank you so much. I'm not sure why all scan bodies don't have that, but that, that changed the game for us. And then you have some workflows for the implant. So the lab makes the abutment in the crown after you scan, or you can have the lab make the abutment, do a split file design, design your crown, and then upload you the file for the crown. You mill the crown yourself. Or three, you can um, do it on a tie base, DIY, do it yourself. Cost comparisons breakdown, custom abutment, crown, around 600 bucks. Lab makes it. 
the abutment, but then they send you the file to mill your own crown. That drops significantly on your cost um, uh, for uh, implant restorations and even tie base even lower. We live here in the middle. We love custom abutments. That's kind of what we do every day. Split file design, that's what it looks like. Um, top and bottom, that's what we mean by the two different files, a file for the abutment, file for the crown. This is what our prescription looks like. You can pick it for like any other custom abutment company, uh, what level if you want, um, full contour, uh, where you want your margins, you can detail it pretty much in your profile. Dropbox send it, they'll send you an approval of the design and you're looking at crown down treatment planning. Um, with the guided case that we place uh, implant guided, then you can have much higher success rate of playing this, placing a screw retain restoration. Mill out your own crown, fit it against the abutment, they mail to you versus uh, cement retained crowns where sometimes, you know, you can have cement left over, you don't see or uh, unable to clean up sub G and that has causes a lot higher uh, implant failures, implant titus. So guided surgery helps you have a lower percentage of, uh, uh, of that so you can have more percentage of screw retained implant options. This is what it looks like. Beautiful restoration after we milled, stain and glaze it and cemented it to the abutment. Coming straight out of the mill, trying the abutment around it. Look how beautiful those fits are. Using the abutment cement to tie them together. Sometimes we'll try on the abutment, we'll try on the crown, do the adjustments, then cement them together, clean up in the lab, and then go um, screw it in the mouth for screw retain restoration. It's a great solution. Here's an example at the end. Look at the second molar, excuse me, first molar there. That screw channels right down the middle. That was a case we 3D printed, printed a guide, placed the implant with the prosthetic in mind, and that actually reality happens that way. You can 3D print the guides um, to do some adjustments on there for you. You simply have the, uh, this, um, the implant analog, you screw to the bottom of the implant guide, and then you can try it in and make your adjustments. Multiple units. Two bridge case there, True Bummit and Digital Dental Leaders made this case and it was just a fabulous workflow to work for. So last thing, we'll end on a little hack and then we'll open it up for questions. So surgical guide, um, we talked about you're um, able to maybe do some integrating with your uh, smile design. And let's see kind of what this hack would look like. So patient finished ortho prematurely. She was in temporary from another provider, came to my office through a family friend, wasn't very happy, ready to finish. She's ready to go. And I'm like, well, we've got some spacing issues here. But let's, let's look at it in our... Uh, implant guide actually she had number 10 missing all right so there's a little bridge implant on 10 um, temporary bridge on 10 we planned and uh, virtually planned the implant placed it and then we've got our temporary bridge after the implant scan the case make a temporary trying to soft tissue mold everything make the temporary, and I'm still like, oh gosh, now I have to tackle this new spaces, uh, made a new temporary for the gingival levels are all completely different. Look there, like thinking about the final aesthetic result, I'm just shaking my head. Uh, did the smile design really quickly, patient saw this kind of live in the chair, she was like, yeah, I understand this better, we wouldn't get everything balanced before, why wouldn't we do that? I'm like, okay, um, went straight to the, Smile design, overlaid it inside our surgical guide design. Okay, so we use the remove tool that we usually just paint the windows and actually use the silhouette to guide where we wanted to remove where the new gingival levels would be. Printed the guide, use our soft tissue dye laser to kind of trim that back. We did sounding and proved that we had enough room for that biologic width, everything. Mark the margins after the final healing. And there's your result. Look at those gingival levels, so much better. There's our custom abutment from True Abutment. There's your before and there's your after. I did not pick the color, patient wanted that, but before and after, that's kind of a, an extra little bonus treat for you guys today. So the best is standard. Clemson football, that's what we believe in. We love our football here in the South. Plan Mecca, 
has the best solutions. Planmeca Fit, fully integrated technology. Um, I, I really just want to have a good time today to show you why they have the best solutions. And in closing, Planmeca has a lot of support. They won't <laughs> let you fail. Um, I showed you a little bit about my digital journey and showed why now is the time to go digital. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Tolbert. Um, we have had several questions submitted, so I will kind of go through them one by one. Um, first question is, what's your scan protocol for subgingival margins? So subgingival margins. So our scan protocol for um, sub-G margins, we usually do a two cord technique. Um, pull the top cord, and that usually gets most of the cases, but if it, let's take it extra. It says it's extra deep. Sometimes we use a soft tissue dyed laser to laser that away, and then we scan. I actually find it with the new color, um, uh, how you can look at your scans after you scan it. You can trace your margins pretty easily now. Um, Sub-G was a little uh, barrier for me at first. Just It's really stepped up our game with retraction, and uh, there's really, it can go so low. It's, it's not a problem. Um, if you can't see it, you can't scan it. But if you can't see it, you can't get in a, uh, a regular impression as well. Great question. All right, next. How much time will you take to print full arch surgical guide? And is it open or closed system for resins? And you can so, speak to the system that you're using now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how long does it take to print? So right now I'm printing um, with, uh, I've, I've used a couple different printers in my office actually. Um, I've used um, Anycubic Photon, I've used um, Sprint Ray, um, Sprint Ray's Moon Ray S, I've used Sprint Ray Pro, uh, worked with the prototype for the Creo. Um, the printing is usually 10, 20 minutes, uh, very short, um, short print times. All right. With the, with the beginning 3D printers, it took a little bit longer, but now it's extremely fast. And are you able to design the surgical guide and export uh, for an STL using Remexis? Oh yeah, so that's what's great about Plymex Solution. It's all open. There's no fee for exporting the case. You're exporting right to your desktop. It has a STL, and you can take it to any uh, 3D printer um, and, and import it in. Yeah, and actually there's a follow-up question. Somebody was asking about what open software meant. If you could just go into a little bit more detail about that. Yeah, so open software is so key. So say you're scanning and then you have to um, and you want to send it to the lab. Sometimes uh, with different um, manufacturers, you have to pay a fee um, just to get it out of your, uh, to export it, to send it outside of your office. So say if you're not designing the crown or, or milling it, same thing with the CT scan. You just simply hit that export and you have the STL file and you can freely use it as you want with any lab or any specialist or intercommunication. Um, also other manufacturers have like a membership fee where yeah, it's open, but you got to pay this um, thousands of dollars a year to do so. Um, so there's a lot of different fees out there, but PlanMac has no fees. It's when I say fully open, it's open. No fees, export it, super easy. No strings attached. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, next, are you charging patients a fee for the surgical guide? For the surgical guide, we do. Um, we kind of built it. Um, so there's a code for surgical guide. Um, Sorry, if we can you shoot me an email, I'll send you the codes we use. I'm sorry, I don't have them memorized the top of my head. Um, but there's CT scan for diagnostic and there's CT scan for simulation. I use the simulation one um, when we're making a surgical guide to compensate you for your time. And then um, surgical guide is a minimal fee. Um, sometimes I include it or bundle it. Sometimes I don't use it at all. But um, uh, typically now, yes, we do. Okay, and there's a related question. Um, when you're taking CBCT, ima CBCT images for endo or diagnostics, are you billing or submitting to insurance? Um, yes, so that, that was tied into that question. So when I, when I do it for like endo, I use the, the, the code that's for diagnostic. Um, so there's the CT scan for interpretation and then there's a CT scan for simulation. And those are the two differences in the two CT code, um, codes. Um, for a practice adopting all these technologies, how do you prioritize introducing them to your practice, both from a clinical outcome and an ROI perspective? Super good question. So we have, like I said in the beginning, we have uh, multiple offices and they're all on the different stages of whether they're a startup that's not profitable yet, whether they've been established practice that is, but the doctor team is not ready to go digital. We have every single one of them on a different 
um, level of the learning curve, but integrating it um, into each practice depends on the doctor and the team level, really. All right, from dental photography to scan, design, et cetera, do you charge for the crown veneer only or do you add a premium? Is it an ROI based on higher charges, um, doing more prosthetics or, and patients? Um, I love that sure. question. So okay. um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but here's basically what I do for that. Um, I'll, we would charge the diagnostic cast. And um, we have our regular diagnostic cast fee, which is usually if they're insurance based, covered by insurance. And then um, um, you can do, you can even sometimes um, bill out for your, um, your diagnostic um, wax up as well. All right. Um, do you do all of your cases with surgical, surgical guides or do you have criteria? On oh, that's, that's good. Yeah. So first I, you know, was doing some and then I was doing all and then I was going back to some again, but now currently kind of pretty much doing it um, mostly with all surgical guides. But here's the deal. There's some cases, you know, honestly, that you can't get the surgical guide in if they can't open wide enough or et cetera. But we actually, we plan and execute mostly all of them. It helps us with the planning of it. Great. Um, someone asked about the integration um, with an iTero scanner um, or CareStream CBCT with Robexis. Um, I'm not sure about the CareStream CBCT, um, but I can speak on the iTero question. So our, our orthodontists in our group, they, most orthodontists scan with iTero because it ties um, in with Invisalign. But that case we showed you with adhesion bridge, um, the Maryland bridge in the beginning, um, uh, cases like that, finishing ortho, uh, they'll scan with the iTero, send us the file. And uh, the, remember the day, I was telling you a good workflow for that would be the day before uh, or the visit before they finish the D-bracket or D-band. So we get the files, ex import them right in. So Atero actually does uh, a good job exporting out as an STL. And we take that file, import it into PlanCAD to do the prosthetic design. It imports right in. You go right to the design. It's easy. Great. Um, <laughs> my 3D printer takes too long to print models and surgical guides. Are there any tips to reduce that time? Yeah, I experienced that in the beginning too, um, you know, with the different 3D printers I was tinkering or learning with, um, you know, it depends on the technology that you're using. There's um, SLA 3D printers that are kind of lasers, point shoot, like the Form Lab, they'll take a little bit longer. And then you've got DLP printers like um, Sprint Ray and um, the Creo that's going to print in sheets, so it's a lot faster. So going with the tech, not, and then there's even ones like Carbon and Envision Tech that um, they're printing with uh, specialized oxygen environments there. So the bill plate doesn't go up and down. And it's, um, it's fast. I don't know what exactly, to be honest with you, what's inside the, the Plameca Creo, but it is extremely fast. When we did our, we did some courses with all these different printers there, and it was the, uh, probably the fastest of all of them. Thank you. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll do one more before we sign off. Uh, the last one is, do you find a pilot hole drill only, uh, only guide is sufficient? Um, it's, it, it's depends on, on the, the case. I like pilot hole guides cause I'm still kind of old school and I like getting a lot of irrigation to the osteotomy. Okay. So I use the pilot hole guide for the depth angle position, um, to get in there and then you have to be careful when you're going through the progression of the rest of your osteotomies, but I haven't found it a problem. And, and I guess you'd have to be kind of a little bit careless to over or, or, or change. There is human error that can happen. So that's where a fully guided definitely helps on those cases. I showed that one case um, on the lower molar where we did a pilot and a fully guided. And I'm glad we had the fully guided um, because he was a train wreck that day. He was moving all around and um, fully guided is definitely uh, a better option for some people, but some people prefer a, a pilot hole guide. Um, actually, a lot of my um, specialists in town we make guides for, they prefer the pilot hole to get them started and then they like to freehand it from there. So it's personal preference. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, we have posted the link to the, um, to the CE survey in the chat um, and the AGD code for the CE is 250. 
Um, I, if you have any additional questions, so Dr. Tolbert does have his uh, email there on his last side if you want to email him directly. If you have specific questions about PlanMECA products, feel free to reach out to your local PlanMECA representative or authorized um, PlanMECA dealer. Thank you all for your time and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.